Look, I really don't think it's any question that prolactin elevated is one of the most sinister hormones to be elevated that you can possibly have, especially for a guy. I mean, for women too, it'll inhibit menstrual cycles. It inhibits libido for women too. For men, it inhibits gonadotropin release, testosterone formulation. It inhibits erections at the base of the penis. And though there are a lot of targeted ways to treat high prolactin, which we're going to get to, to optimize sexual function, there's also a lot of sinister things that could be in your regimen or that the internet likes to say is good that can raise prolactin make those lactotropes secrete more prolactin and end you in a pretty disastrous place so what i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to break it all down because prolactin is much more important than people think regarding sexual function specifically for men so sit tight boys because we're going to the classroom Meantime, discounts on product this week, 20 now, saves you 20% off the supercharged dopamine course that is full-fledged dopamine hacking. Everything you needed to know is in that course. Torque stack, this is the big one. All day energy and focus, man. High level motivation, 35% off. Codes are in the description of this video. Code for that is 35 torque. Lastly, I am a consultant on TRT, nootropics, energy optimization, sexual dysfunction, ED, hosts of other things. You can hire me in under a minute at livecortex.com. Again, every link for everything we do is in the description of the video. Okay, so off the bat, to understand the sinister nature of prolactin, we really should talk about pathways of inhibition. These are the things that prolactin inhibits, which cause problems in your life and in your health. All right, so number one pathway of inhibition is the inhibition of gonadotropins, all right? Prolactin being elevated will inhibit the pulsatile secretion of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. These are the hormones that you need for intratesticular testosterone generation, as well as steroidogenesis for neurosteroids like DHA and pregnenolone, as well as spermatogenesis for your sperm. High levels of prolactin induce infertility in men. Okay, it will make you infertile. It will inhibit your testosterone formulation in the testicles. Okay, you will be making far less testosterone. You may even go hypogonadal when your prolactin is above range. This is one of the main reasons they know that I've done videos against Kratom, which we're going to get to, and still like I, some small percentage, 10% of the audience is like, no, Kratom's great and you're selling products, so why should we listen to you? I'm the guy that's gotten the clients that have had elevated prolactin and it destroyed their sexual function because they were taking Kratom. And the mechanism of action for that is the inhibition of the gonadotropins. Number two, and this is a real sinister one, that, that no one ever talks about, that not a lot of people even think about regarding prolactin. And that is the burnout, the burnout of the tuburoinfundibular dopamine neurons, otherwise known as the tida neurons. So the tida dopamine neurons project from the hypothalamus they cross over this, this stalk called the infundibulum, which is the bridge between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Uh, let me see if I can actually show you a good image of the infundibulum. Okay, this is an image of the pituitary gland. Interestingly, the pituitary gland looks like gonads, basically. But above the, the pituitary gland, so these, these anterior and posterior pituitary gland, above that is the hypothalamus. Now this stalk here, which is kind of the portal system, if you will, for some of the transmitter, some of the compounds that end up building like your antidiuretic hormone. When prolactin is elevated, you will get less or no dopamine throughput from the hypothalamus through that infundibular stalk. If you have no dopamine throughput through the infundibulum down to the pituitary, that further causes elevation of prolactin because dopamine in the scientific literature and in general is also known as prolactin inhibiting hormone or PIH. It is the number one chemical that your body has as a defense, defense against prolactin. Now here's why this is so sinister and what exactly happens here. When prolactin is elevated, past a certain threshold above range, the dopamine neurons, the tighter neurons, as well as other dopaminergic projection has to get that under control, right? Your brain in the hypothalamus knows that that's its job to try to get that prolactin under control. So it's gonna secrete dopamine in order to bind to the D2 receptors that sit at the lactotropes, these prolactin secreting cells, and block prolactin from release. Well, if you've got something that's elevating prolactin, like kratom, opioid receptor agonists, lots of stuff, which we're gonna to get to here in a bit, then these dopamine neurons are going to go on overload to try to signal through that infundibulum, that pituitary stalk, 
to stop the prolactin from secreting. And what happens is if you've got something that's constantly elevating prolactin, those dopamine neurons can't keep up and they eventually burn out. They downregulate, they stop firing. They cannot manage this excess in prolactin. So as a result of that, I mean, you're gonna get multifold things happening. Obviously sexual dysfunction, your libido is going to completely disappear. Erections are going to completely disappear. You're obviously gonna have inhibition of testosterone, which is contributing to all this. But at the same time, libido and erection quality will be very bad because there's no hypothalamic dopamine because that system is not firing properly. This is a disaster. <laughs> If I could put it bluntly. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna come back to that here in a bit, but understand that if you got elevated prolactin, you know these dopamine neurons in the hypothalamus are going to try to keep up with. Eventually, they're going to burn out, and that is not good. Third thing that is sinister about prolactin, a pathway of inhibition, is the inhibition of blood flow at the penile base. Okay, the scientific literature is clear because this has been investigated in men with hyperprolactinemia or elevated levels of prolactin. What exactly is causing the ED? And the ED happens independent, independent of testosterone concentrations. So they ended up discovering that you could have, you know, seven, 800, 900, you could have super physiologic testosterone levels. But if you have elevated prolactin levels, you're still gonna have erectile dysfunction via inhibition of blood flow at the penile base, right? So if you think you're on TRT and you're just gonna manage or you're running a steroid cycle or whatever, and you're gonna manage sexual function, erectile quality, like with other stuff, like maybe you can get away with pretty high dose Tadalafil, but in these cases, even the highest doses of PDE5 inhibitors really don't work. You're gonna to need to be injecting Trimix, which are potent, potent intrapenile vasodilators in order to go out to get around this. And still you're gonna have a lack of sensation, predominantly because of the inhibition of the dopaminergic neurons. And lastly, the, the, a vicious cycle, kind of as I'm alluding to, of a lack of dopamine. Again, elevated prolactin, these hypothalamic dopamine neurons have to try to keep up with that because they're the only you know thing in your body that, that inhibits prolactin predominantly, right? They're the major driving forces of the control of prolactin. Lactin. These dopamine neurons will get burnt out. And then you got this vicious cycle of high prolactin, inhibition of gonadotropins, inhibition of testosterone, inhibition of erectile quality and blood flow to the penis. But at the same time, inhibition of libido because there's no hypothalamic dopamine neurons firing in normal quantity. This is a disaster. And again, at the bottom here, all of these things inhibit sexual function, right? There aren't a whole lot of deleterious effects of super elevated prolactin other than the potential for increased cardiovascular disease, which I guess is bad, but the, the links on that are kind of here and there in the literature. It's just not super conclusive, but it probably does happen. But in the end, all of this inhibits sexual function. Let's talk about causes of elevation, all right? The sinister nature of prolactin. Causes of elevation, number one, are opioid receptor agonists. Opioid receptor agonists. Now, like I think tyoneptine has some interplay with the opioid receptors. Obviously, opioids have an interplay with the opioid receptor. Any opioid drug will have an interplay with the opioid receptors, but specifically Kratom. This is why I did you know, two major pieces, which again, 10% of people I got a lot of blowback from and a lot of negative comments and a lot of people insinuating I was just trying to tell you not take Kratom and take our stuff. I don't care if you take our stuff. You know, our business is good. I know the scientific literature and I know that at this point, 60 plus men that have come to me with massive sexual dysfunction, they thought they had PSSD because the symptoms mimicked it when really, they were continuously taking Kratom. They had elevated prolactin. Nobody ever told them about that. They never looked at it. The moment we got the blood work, we saw the prolactin was elevated, gonadotropin release was inhibited, testosterone was low. And probably, you know, tighter neurons, these, these hypothalamic dopamine neurons were downregulated. All right, so yeah, look, there are other ways to deal with your pain. Please do not take Kratom. This is the number one, number one cause in, in my consulting work of elevated prolactin. Literally the number one. Number two though, uh, dopamine D2 receptor blockers. On the pituitary gland, uh, where the prolactin gets secreted in these cells called lactotropes, there are dopamine receptors on those lactotropes. That's in fact how dopamine can come down and bind to those lactotropes and inhibit prolactin release. They do so via the dopamine D2 receptor that's on the uh, prolactin secreting cells. Antipsychotics, as an example, are a class of drugs that predominantly act through the D2 receptor in an antagonistic fashion. So they block those receptors. When you block those receptors, there's no way for dopamine to get in there and inhibit prolactin secretion. So as a result, you get elevated prolactin. This is one of the many downfalls of antipsychotic drugs, as well as anything that you may be taking that block dopamine receptors. 
Okay, so look at your supplements, look at the mechanisms of action, look at the drugs that you're taking, and identify whether or not there's D2 receptor antagonism. If there is, you've got a problem, and your prolactin is probably going to go out of range. Number three, and probably the most sinister or harder to deal with cause of elevated prolactin are pituitary adenomas. And actually, a specific class of pituitary adenomas called prolactinomas, okay? You can get a tumor in your pituitary gland that secretes prolactin, where you have an actual mass on the pituitary, which is lactotropes, these prolactin secreting cells that have grown out of control and that are secreting excess levels of prolactin. Now, the causes of pituitary adenomas in the literature aren't very clear. There's a lot of theories ranging from uh, genetic uh, and inherited hormonal problems, specifically hypothalamus pituitary issues. However, everything that blocks the dopamine D2 receptors like kratom <laughs> or anything that heavily stimulates the lactotropes on the pituitary to create more prolactin uh, like estradiol in very, very high quantities, very consistently. You know, you, you can actually feed rats high levels of estradiol and they develop pituitary tumors. They develop prolactinomas. So anything that blocks the D2 receptors, drugs mainly, and being exposed to super physiologic levels of estradiol for consistent periods of time, among other things, potentially consistent use of marijuana, potentially, you know, potentially a lot of other things, they're going to cause pituitary adenomas. That's just out of control lactotropes. It's just a bunch of lactotropes. These are the cells that secrete prolactin that are just like, they've grown way, way further than they're supposed to grow. Those, you know, require an MRI for diagnosis because you'll see them, right, on a pituitary MRI. You're going to see a mass there. And, you know, if you've got elevated prolactin, it's a prolactinoma. You don't want that. This is why I've always warned against, you know, opioid receptor agonists and anything that blocks the D2 receptors. Lastly, some anabolic androgenic steroids, okay, like trenbolone, uh, decadurabolin, and there are others as well that are prolactogenic. Uh, you're going to see like in the uh, steroid forums on the web that people usually have to resort to taking cabergoline, which is a D2 receptor or agonist dopamine drug basically to inhibit prolactin or to lower it because it's far out of range because they're on trend or they're on DECA. So, you know, I mean, look, there are plenty of other anabolic androgenic steroids that are powerful. that are going to get you a great anabolic effect that will not mess with prolactin and get it, you know, to the point where it's elevated again at the the end, all of this inhibits sexual function. All right, now that we know how sinister prolactin is for your health as a man, specifically your sexual health, let's talk about ways to reduce prolactin, okay? Number one is a compound called Shisandra. Shisandra. Now, this is a, a paper that is titled, uh, where's the top of this paper here? Therapeutic effects of Shisandra chinensis on the hyperprolactinemia rat. So this is a rat that actually, I believe, ended up having a pituitary tumor. And it goes through how effectively one of the major compounds in Shisandra called gomacin N, okay, gomacin N, it's just like one of these cool compounds, kind of like Makuna that has a bunch of different chemicals in it, is a major regulator and inhibitory factor of prolactin. This actually, this compound in and of itself, which you can buy at Amazon, like you can just buy Shisandra, it's really not hard to find is used and studied for the inhibition of prolactin and the treatment of prolactinomas. So Shisandra is a, is a great strategy. If you have a pituitary adenoma, you're probably going to want to go with the secondary option here, which is dopamine D2 receptor agonist, but Shisandra can be useful for elevated prolactin uh, without a pituitary tumor. Number two though, uh, the primary mainstay treatment in the pharmacolog in the uh, correction, in the pharmaceutical world is dopamine D2 agonists, okay? These are, and this makes sense, right? Anything that's going to go and agonize the D2 receptors that sit on the lactotropes are going to inhibit prolactin secretion. And dopamine agonists, so I can, somewhat high doses and taken consistently, like induce some sort of fibrosis of the lactotropes on the pituitary. It actually goes and damages those cells so that they can't grow out of control. It, 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 some of them, the most studied ones and most powerful ones with the longest half-lives, like cabergoline, actually shrink prolactinomas. They shrink tumors in your pituitary. All right, so dopamine D2 agonists are the strongest, most powerful uh, probably quickest way to lower prolactin, even in the case of a prolactinoma that's out of control and secreting prolactin, these drugs, specifically cabergoline, will reduce prolactin levels. Another drug for that is a drug called bromocryptine. Uh, I think in, in for all intents and purposes, and for you know by every measure that is a less effective drug, if, if the half-life's very short, it's like six to eight hours, you gotta take it multiple times a day to keep that hold over those lactotropes from secreting prolactin. It tends to come with more side effects than cabergoline, 
and you know, again, it, it's in the literature, it's not as effective at inducing tumor shrinkage, uh, normalization of prolactin or normal normoprolactinemia, and it's it's less effective than cabergoline at restoring sexual function. Okay, so keep that in mind. But dopamine D2 agonists, and those are the primary ones. There are others, but those are the primary ones are one of the best ways to treat that. Thirdly, P5P, otherwise known as pyridoxal 5-phosphate. P5P is the bioactive form of B6, right? We've talked about this before, and there's a lot of literature suggesting that vitamin B6 can help lower prolactin via enhancing dopamine synthesis, and it does. P5P uh, is a, a little bit of a tricky compound to take because in the presence of a GABA deficiency, excessive quantities of P5P are going to cause neuropathy-like symptoms, but only in the presence of a GABA deficiency. I went and hunted down that mechanism there. Otherwise, though, it's generally safe to take in 100 to 200 milligram quantities, will make you synthesize more dopamine and that will act directly on those lactotrope cells to inhibit prolactin secretion. Uh, fourthly, tyrosine and macuna. So tyrosine, we all know tyrosine, and if you didn't, it's the direct amino acid building block of L-DOPA. And you know, once uh, uh, levodopa gets decarboxylated, it then turns into usable dopamine. Now, in order for tyrosine to become levodopa or L-DOPA, you need high levels or at least adequate expression of a synthesis enzyme called tyrosine hydroxylase. And this enzyme is actually downregulated in a lot of different cases and in response to a lot of drugs, including SSRIs. Things that upregulate it would be testosterone, actual exogenous testosterone, uh, N9-methylbeta-carboline. The, these, they're not ABC. These things will upregulate tyrosine hydroxylase so that your tyrosine can turn into L-DOPA, and then L-DOPA again gets decarboxylated by DOPA decarboxylase and, and turned into usable dopamine. So tyrosine is very useful for controlling prolactin. It doesn't have a very long half-life. You know, your your, tire, your dopamine levels will be elevated for about three hours or so post-administration. This is all dose-dependent, but it is useful in controlling prolactin that isn't excessively out of range and isn't driven by a tumor. Secondarily, macunapurine. You know, th this is the, the next step down the line, giving you some naturally occurring levodopa, which will be decarboxylated and turn into usable dopamine. You know, macuna is actually closer to usable dopamine in the pathways than tyrosine is. That's one of the reasons it's very effective for kind of instantly raising dopamine. And lastly, I put a little star by this. I, I, I tried to make it look like a neuron down there. 9-MEBC. The reason I put that star is because we actually don't know, because we don't have any scientific literature on this, if 9-MEBC can be inhibitory of prolactin, but I believe it can. And the main reason it, I think it can do that is through the regeneration of dopamine neurons, the catalyzation of dopamine differentiation, which is where dopamine neurons start very small, almost like babies, and then grow axons and dendrites and branch out through the rest of your brain. The upregulation of tyrosine hydroxylase, the upregulation of various nerve growth factors or growth factors in the brain. So you got all these things that are catalyzing a restored or partially restored dopamine profile, which is then going to be inhibitory of those lactotropes that produce prolactin. So 9-MBC would uh, theoretically and probably be another prolactin inhibitor. What are the major takeaways, boys? Look, yeah, prolactin's sinister. You don't want elevated levels of it. It, it is it's something that will destroy your sexual life and destroy your mood and your well-being and hosts of other things. I mean, you're going to be weaker in the gym because you don't have adequate testosterone. Your energy is going to be shit because of the lack of testosterone. Your sexual function is going to be very subpar, including libido. Yeah, this inhibition of the hypothalamic titan neurons, you know, you, you just don't want that to, to be the case. That That is going to erode Race your libido. It, 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 like and we, without those hypothalamic dopamine neurons, you're not going to have libido. This is why PT-141 works for libido because you're actually reestablishing for a temporary period those titan neurons. Purell inhibits erections and testosterone, okay, via inhibiting gonadotropin-releasing hormone as well as uh, luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. So you just will make far less testosterone than you need to be making at your age. At the same time, again, your, your erections are going to be inhibited via blood flow negatives at the penile base as well as the inhibition or the lack of functioning of the dopamine neurons in the hypothalamus that are that you know effectively act as libido modulators, libido regulators. Third major point though, high prolactin can be treated successfully, even in the case of a prolactin secreting tumor, which is like, you know, I don't know, 5% of the time where people have elevated prolactin, it's really not that common to have. The stats of it are something crazy. It's very uncommon, but it does happen. But it can be treated with 
D2 agonists like Cabergoline or Bromocryptine, even Primaprexol, can be treated with Macuna, P5P, Shisandra, 9-MBC potentially, all the things that I just discussed in the previous slide. Importantly, one of the most sinister hormones, this is why I did a video, not so we can say don't take Kratom and instead take Torque, like people said that in comment and then the people repeated it like as if like that was very original like don't be a fucking idiot people come to me with their sexual function destroyed and i've got to get them better and it was destroyed from kratom and it's because of elevated prolactin let me look at their bloods and they are terrible Elevated prolactin, whether it's induced from a tumor or whether it's induced from, you know, running a DECA cycle, whether it's induced from, you know, having a D2 receptor antagonist in the mix or an opiate receptor agonist in the mix. It's one of the most sinister hormones to have uh, at high levels, guys. You do not want to experience life with elevated levels of prolactin. Last point. Bonus point, you know, there's been some speculation that lower levels of prolactin or deficient prolactin can cause sexual dysfunction. And I have confirmed that this is true. People have confirmed this across various uh, forums on Reddit that when they take cabergoline or an otherwise very powerful D2 receptor uh, agonist that prolactin gets too low and they end up having sexual dysfunction there. I'm going to do an upcoming video about an experiment that I ran with a D2 receptor agonist where I took cabergoline down to 1.5 nanograms per milliliter at which time I had sexual dysfunction. Now, I, there's a lot of theories that I have on that. It's probably, probably because there's dopamine agonism. You're probably shutting down a little bit of that hypothalamic dopamine as sort of a compensatory reaction, and that will inhibit libido and sexual function. So yes, if PRL is too, too low, I mean, if it's four nanograms per milliliter, you're fine, and you'll have a, a better refractory period. You know, erections are going to be better, libido is going to be good and all that stuff. But if if it's below two nanograms per milliliter, you're probably gonna have some inhibition of your libido and you might have some erectile dysfunction as well. Like we've talked about this before and prolactin has been you know, somewhat of an interesting topic like the, for me to talk about over the years because it's such a sinister hormone. We've talked about ways to lower it and things that cause it. And I just wanted to do this video to really show you the full breakdown of how deleterious it is, your sexual function, and how bad it can be for your quality of life via reducing libido and reducing erectile function, reducing testosterone, making it so that you can't work Work out in the gym, you have no energy, you have no drive, you don't want to conquer anything. There's nothing good about having elevated prolactin. Whether you think you're taking something that helps your pain or whatever, he, he, there's no biological free lunch, my friend. You're causing bigger downstream problems and you don't want to do that. And I hope this video has been influential in that regard. But as I said in the beginning, specials on product, I mean, look, this is a, a dopamine promoting nootropic. So in some sense, and the scientific literature backs this up, actually torque will help you inhibit prolactin, right? If you've got elevated levels of prolactin, that will help. But predominantly, this is a nootropic, okay, for dopamine, for focus, for energy, for that kind of all-day stimulant drive. It's 35% off right now, guys. It's our most popular product. I made it myself. Code for that is 35 torque. Talking about dopamine, if you go to the courses tab at livecortex.com, you're going to find a bunch of different courses, one of which is the supercharged dopamine speed course. This goes through every single facet of dopamine hacking, every chemical known to man that actually works and protocols therein to hack dopamine is in that course. Uh, discount is 20% off, code for that is 20 now. Lastly, if you wanna hire me, I've had to raise rates on the simple email consultations because I am pretty booked on the bigger consults, but that's what I'm really focusing on right now. If you need to work with me over a course of a three or six month period and you have the budget to fix sexual dysfunction, ED, get your nootropic regim uh, regimen formulated, get your tier T protocol dialed in, host of other topics, you can hire me in under a minute for any one of our consults at livecortex.com. All right, boys, you know what to do, and I'll tell you what to do. Like the video, man. All right, it means a lot. Please hit that like button, it's free to do, and it, it really means a lot to the channel. If you dislike it, dislike the video, all good. Thanks though, bro. Otherwise, sub to the channel, you're gonna love all the pieces of content that come out of here in the live streams that we do on Thursday evening and Saturday morning. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you have a great week. And I'll talk to you guys on the next one.